Hello, friends. friends. Did you mean to harmonize with me in a minor key? Because that's what you just did. That's what I do. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to our fake podcast. My name is Miley. I'm Eric. And if you're new here, we do this fake podcast because we like to sit and chit chat occasionally in videos on our YouTube channel. And I just like using these fancy microphones, so we don't post it anywhere on any podcasting platforms. We just post it here for you to watch on YouTube. And we don't plan what we're going to talk about in advance, and we kind of just... Riff. Riff. (laughs) So, welcome. And if that's not... A Those strong, of you that are still here, yeah, we, we're <laughs> that's not glad a strong reasoning to subscribe. If you aren't subscribed already, then go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> we do lots of fun things on this channel, by the way. Um, occasional fake podcast episodes, but mostly we do lifestyle vlogs of just our daily life, weekend vlogs, things like that, shopping videos, grocery hauls, all kinds of things. So True. today, Scrimpy, what are we talking about on our fake podcast? I'm so excited about today's episode of BT Dubs. The theater. We are both super theater fans, mm-hmm. and we have a lot of theater experience we thought we would share it with you people today since i know theater goers watch our channel so nerds should we maybe start out by just like a little very short backstory about our about how we each got involved with theater sure you want to go first you want me to go first um you can go first okay so for me it was around eighth grade i took a drama class at my middle school and also did like some church play stuff um, at my church played Jesus in the Easter story during (laughs) high school that's how big of a deal I was at my church Um, you got cast as Jesus whoa yeah now that I didn't know that about you so wow (laughs) don't know why that's such a (laughs) start putting that on my CV I (laughs) was Jesus um so, yeah, I, I did it all throughout high school and really, really enjoyed it. Um, my first, like, proper production was a Shakespeare in the Park that my school did. And then I got involved with my community theater in Bartlesville by doing a couple shows uh, there and directed out there a few times, which was super fun. We have a guest star. This is Esme. And then I decided to go to college to st- study theater at OBU. Did a bunch of shows there, obviously. And then hooked up with SLT after taking a... Shawnee Little Theater, the theater where we currently do shows, our local community theater, which is a very well-renowned theater. After taking like a, I think, four to five year break from theater completely. And then I got back into it at SLT. So yeah. Nice. And I grew up in the theater. Um, My great-grandmother actually was one of the first people that did shows at Shawnee Little Theater when it was founded over 50 years ago. And my whole family has been doing shows there ever since. And my entire family on my dad's side is super, super musical, super theatrical. My Aunt Darla also is too, my mom's sister. So it just like runs both sides of the family. Hopkins in our town are kind of known for being involved at Shawnee Little Theater and doing theater. So I got involved in theater at an extremely young age. I think I did my first musical when I was five years old. Theater was very synonymous with family for me growing up because I did so many shows throughout my childhood and pretty much every single one of them one of my family members or more were in it. It is a huge part of our life. So many of our friends do theater and we just absolutely love it. So most of our D and D group are people (laughs) from the theater. So So, uh, theater is our life. Yeah. We have other hobbies and interests, but I would say that one is probably the top, at least that we do together for sure. Oh yeah. So that's our theater history, our background. Um, But today I thought it would be so fun to talk about like juicy theater stories, maybe like best shows we've been in, worst shows we've been in, spill a little theater tea, if you will. (laughs) So we've got our tea here. What are you drinking today, Scrimpy? It's a cold brew with three shots of espresso in it. Interesting. I'm drinking a treat from Sonic, which is a Dr. Pepper with cherry and vanilla. It's delicious. Okay. So um, first, should we talk about... What's your top five favorite musicals? Let's just start start strong. Um, That's a hard one. Yeah. I mean, I know that Hades Town is in the top five guaranteed lock. Mm-hmm. Probably Come From Away uh, is perpetually in my top five. Um, Hunchback will always be up there, I think, forever and ever. Um, I, I don't think I don't think I've 
experience there's a new show that i've started listening we can talk to. about your new show in a second yeah. but, but i don't, I don't know, know that it's, it's reached yeah. the pinnacle top five yeah, yet yeah, for yeah. you um but i have such a hard time picking my top five shows in general uh last five years yes really really good one and oh i know as me probably next to normal are like my top five like i really love them i could listen to them at any point but i also think they're good pieces of next art. to normal really yeah love that show won the pulitzer interesting i mean i love that show too but i did not think that was in your top five okay so my top five are in no particular order lamas heathers the musical sound of music the book of mormon and probably hades town yeah i i could have told you your top five <laughs> well okay rude you basic I'm that just, is not I'm basic. That is so mean. Oh my gosh. What are we, five minutes into this thing and you're already turning on me, Scrimpy? Jeez Louise. Just kidding. Mm-hmm, sure. So, Rogers and Hammerstein. That's our fave oh. musicals. What do you think about that, Esme? Esme has no thoughts about that. Why don't you talk about, like, dream show to direct? What's your dream show to direct? Um. Is that where your newest... Thing it's you found definitely rapidly in. climbing up the ranks. And I think that's what the one that's captured my imagination the most. So I'll probably talk about it, even though there might be some shows that like, I don't know. So there's a show that ran off Broadway in 2019 called Alice by Heart. That's by the same music team that did Spring Awakening. Mm-hmm. Um, Do and you love Spring Awakening? Yes. But it's got a very Peter and the Starcatcher vibe in that it is set in our world. Like it's London during World War II, during the Blitz. And but the main character, Alice, has a copy of Alice in Wonderland and to deal with the grief that she's feeling with her, the boy that she's like best friend slash in love with uh, gets diagnosed with tuberculosis. She retreats into Wonderland in her mind. And so all of the chorus people and other characters in the London underground during the bombing become the characters in Wonderland. And so it's just such a. The show itself, the design of it is very stripped down. And very stylized show. Yes. And like when you see, like in the production that we watched, the Caterpillar from Wonderland, when he comes out, rather than having this really. Esme just opens the gate herself. That's a problem we got to address. Anyway. Rather than being in this fantastical Caterpillar costume or something, he's in a coat that is made from the labels of the canned goods that that character was carrying in the opening scene. And so it's that kind of... And, like, the turtle is wearing, like, a green British army helmet. Like, it's very suggestive in its style. It's very, like, thrown together, haphazard. What I really liked about it was the movement. It's basically the kind of show where... You can't discern the point in which blocking stops and choreography starts. The whole show just moves so beautifully. I think it has some issues, but we don't need to get into that any more than we already have. But this is Eric's new obsession, which I really like it too. But anyway, it would be super fun to direct. It would be very challenging to direct, but it would be really fun. Yeah, and I think it's just one of those shows because it's so stripped down in its presentation you could do so much creatively with it kind of like what we did with hunchback yeah with you could throw it together in many different ways in interesting ways uh, as opposed to something like just lay Miz to throw right. a show out there where it's, it's very set in how you present it um what about you i think my i will i want to direct heather's the musical because i just love it so much But I also really, really want to direct Once Upon a Mattress, which is one of my favorite childhood shows. I just adore the music. I adore the the book. I adore everything about that show. It's totally fluff. Kind of a silly, fun musical that I think would be such a fun, lighthearted, silly, good time to direct. Mm -hmm. Then Heather's is kind of the opposite. Like It's more of a message, like very angsty, very hard musically. so those are the two that pop into my brain that I yeah. would get super excited about directing. So we're both, I think at this point in our lives, we are both much more focused on directing than we are performing. I think probably me so more than you, like yeah. you're, you still like to get on stage and 
have meaty roles, lead roles. I'm like beyond that. Doesn't like bring me the kind of joy that it used to bring me. And I think just like the way that I like to direct shows and the type of shows I like to direct, directing is a very taxing thing. And so being in a show is where like, I just got done being in a show and that's where I got to like let my hair down and just show up and have a good time and not yeah. have to think too much. So yeah. But I definitely agree that I think directing is holds a bit more weight now. So that being said, we have a lot of shows we want to direct. Yeah. Is really the point I was trying to make with that long-winded little bit there. What about, do you have a show that you just like absolutely hate? Like does something, po- I'm trying to think like, oh, I do not love Sweeney Todd. I like Sweeney Todd quite a bit. No, um I don't like it. Oh, My Fair Lady. <laughs> yeah, we both <laughs> hate My Fair Lady. <laughs> um I feel like there's an obvious one I'm not thinking of that I really don't Tootsie. like. Tootsie. We both hated Tootsie oh, when hate we saw it. Oh, I hate Tootsie. Anyway, if you guys have any juicy musicals you hate, comment down below. But I really can't think of any right now. So um, I think we should move on to our juicy theater stories because I think that's what's most fun to listen to. Yeah, let's do it. So what would you say is the worst show you've ever been in? Like, okay, okay, let me give this caveat. What's the worst show you've ever been in? rehearsal period wise mm. biggest nightmare of a rehearsal I'm trying process. to think of what mine would be and then maybe we'll do like worst show you've ever been in like yeah. outcome wise i i have an answer for the worst rehearsal process <laughs> wait but i have to say if you're watching this and you are our friend or someone who we do theater with don't be offended if you were in this show yeah if you were in a show we're about to talk about or Anything like that. Yeah. These are just our opinions, and we're just having a little fun. So, well, my caveat is going to keep I, hopefully anybody from getting too offended. Uh, but <laughs> like the worst rehearsal process for me of a show I've ever done. Oh, sorry. I'm never going to get. I'm this so sense. sorry. I just it popped into my brain which one it obviously was. So sorry. Go ahead. For me, it was probably nine to five, just really? because I had so little to do in that show. Uh-huh. Like through no no one's like real fault except for the director Trevor who I hate to this day. No, um, <laughs> Trevor's one of our really good friends. <laughs> uh, but no, like I you you recall me coming home after rehearsal and just like yeah, I guess that's true. You, I, your character really you were in like three or four scenes. Yeah, and it's hard when you're in a show that you kind of just have. I mean, honestly, I like being in a show where I get to sit backstage and like busy myself with like nah. my, reading my Kindle or whatever. But yeah, I can see how that would be really hard for you to not be super featured in a show and have a lot of downtime. That the makes next, sense. The next show in the season was Lion in Winter, which I was going to try to be in. And that's like an acting show. And so I was like chomping at the bit to get to that. You were just but, like done with the fluffy musical that you yeah. didn't have a lot of stuff to do in and wanted to get to your meteor show. That makes sense. Like literally my longest scene in that show in 9 to 5 was me standing there silently while our friend Christina belted in my face to get out. Oh, yeah. You played the sleazy boyfriend. That was another part of why it wasn't fun for you because you hated playing that sleazy boyfriend character. I remember that. You would come home and be like, I just hate this guy. It's hard (laughs) to play him. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. My longest stretch on stage was Christina just screaming at me. (laughs) And me just, I I had nothing to to say. Shout out to Christina. Uh, I just stood there for most of the song and then walked out. So. And that was a really good show, too. Yeah. A lot of our friends were in that. Yeah, it, it was just super a personal good thing. Super good performances. Like, yeah, yeah. I just didn't have much Interesting. To do. Okay, can you guess what mine is? I mean, I don't want to guess and be wrong. If you're wrong, we'll, we'll bleep it. Crucible? Yeah, it's Crucible. Yeah. You're right. So, actually, Eric and I met doing the show The Crucible at SLT. And I was playing Abigail. You were playing Hale. Yep. And... There was a group of the adults that were playing all the adult parts and a group of like 15 and younger girls playing all the girl parts and then me smack dab in the middle. So I didn't really have anyone in the cast that I was like bosom buddies with. Like I would sit there and like embroider (laughs) (laughs) Um, on my very limited downtime. But no, the reason that that show was so hard for me was because I think I was 20 when I did that show. 19 or 20. And... All the roles I had played up to that point were easy to connect with and just came super naturally to me. And the role of Abigail was just like complete opposite. I just had such a hard time connecting to her and like really 
I think my performance in the end was really good and I'm proud of that show, but it was a slog yeah. to get through. I mean, it, it drained me because I had to work so hard at it and the subject material is so <laughs> intense, especially for me as the character that I was playing. Like it yeah. was just so much intensity and emotion. I just didn't love the rehearsal process. Plus, I'm a very organized and, like, on it kind of person, and I don't tend to put a lot of weight and time into getting into the nitty-grittiness of the acting. It just, like, comes to me. But the director of that show, who's a fantastic director, is that way, and so rehearsal would go totally off schedule and... That wasn't my... Um, I loved the rehearsal process <laughs> for that show. <laughs> it wasn't what I would choose to have the rehearsal process be. And then on top of figuring out a really intense character that I did not relate to at all, it was just super grueling. It was a super grueling process, but I think the show turned out really, really good. Don't you? Yeah, I agree. So. It was a good show. Okay, what about a show that you were in that was the worst show product-wise? I think we may have the same answer for this one. Do you want to say it at the same time? Sure. Okay. One, two, three. Lacage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was such a fun show to be a part of. It was of. the most fun rehearsal process. We had such cursed. a good group of people, but that show was cursed. Okay. Yeah. It was cursed big time. It was not anyone's fault why no, the show. No, no one's fault at all. Like, Everyone in it was super talented. One of the actors got arrested for like unpaid parking tickets or un- like. Uh, for a misunderstanding and he's the sweetest guy like uh, so the whole so, so silly on opening day as he was pulling into the parking lot of the theater so like we literally had 10 minutes notice that and w- the director went on my uncle timmy yeah. who is an incredible professional director yeah <clears throat> uh but then like it was like the stage got painted <laughs> opening day <laughs> and we had to be out there in tap shoes and miley <laughs> beefed it at one point <laughs> Um, and, but but even yeah. from the beginning, like nobody showed up to audition because this show was not a well known show, and I had to play two parts. I had to play the ingenue and the fiance of the sun, and also play a drag queen because there were no other dancers. Yeah. So I literally every single night of that show would put my Anne makeup on, take it off after my first Anne scene, put my drag queen makeup on, take it off after my before my next and scene like back and forth and back and forth makeup on and off like six times because we were that short cast yeah um and the crazy ice storm hit second weekend and so the person leading our live pit got in an accident and couldn't make it to the theater so everyone had to scramble around to like be in new roles within the pit and one of the dressers had to learn how to play the melodica (laughs) my cousin emma shout out to emma and the melodica is like (laughs) an important (laughs) instrument in the like it plays the main melody it plays like the melody of the show show. so yeah (laughs) and Emma's an amazing musician she can play the piano like crazy on the clarinet but or saxophone Um, do you play clarinet or it's saxophone saxophone. yeah saxophone anyway so Lacage was the most fun show but the most cursed Cursed. end product yeah (laughs) definitely okay do you have any crazy theater stories probably the craziest theater story I have, like, I screwed up during a show. It was, like, my first large speaking role at the local community theater in Bartlesville. (laughs) We were doing Neil Simon's Rumors. I was playing, I think his name is Glenn Cooper, maybe, was the character's name. Anyway, long story short, uh, I chased the woman playing my wife off of this, off of this scene, off stage. Jeez. Did you just have a stroke? Uh, um, (laughs) And I had some downtime off stage and I knew that my cue line was quiet I can't hear myself think and but I did not realize that like five pages before that the same oh, character no. said quiet I can't hear him speak when he's on the phone with someone and I don't always get you when lines are so similar so yeah I, I was sitting backstage this was like during a performance I think it was our second or third show and I hear what I'm convinced is my cue line thinking man it came up a lot quicker tonight I must have just zoned out. And so I run on stage, give my line, and realize nobody is in the right spot. And I'm like a 17-year-old kid. I don't know what I'm supposed to do in this situation. So after what felt like 15 minutes, but was probably like 45 seconds. We <laughs> can you imagine if it was 15 <laughs> minutes? <laughs> we improv our way out of that scene to where I can get off stage again. 
and then I'm off stage. My actual cue line comes up, and then I rush off or rush back on. So, yeah, that's probably my craziest wow. on stage theater story. What about you? So I played Penny in Hairspray, and one night on a performance, the stage manager rushes backstage like 15 minutes before Without Love, which is a song that my character was in and Seaweed, my love interest, was also in. And she's like, hey, have you seen Seaweed? We can't find him anywhere. And I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? We're in the middle of a performance what do you mean you can't find him? He was on stage like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I saw him like 10 <laughs> minutes ago on stage. Like what? <laughs> We're about to have to go on stage again together. Like we better find him quick. So it turns out Seaweed had a girlfriend. Congrats. That was pregnant. Congrats. None of us knew throughout the entire rehearsal process that he had a girlfriend who was pregnant. We would have continued to not know that he had a girlfriend who was pregnant throughout the entire show if she hadn't have gone into labor in the middle of that performance and he rushed out in a panic without finishing the show to the hospital to see the birth of his child, <laughs> which, you know, can you blame him? <laughs> I, I would Congrats. probably leave too. I mean, I would definitely leave if I was birthing that yeah, child. I was about to say, you wouldn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> you would probably leave too. If that, well, actually Depends on how big the role, was. Eric would definitely stay and finish no. the show. That's just Eric. But <laughs> LOL. Painting me in a great light. <laughs> so he literally had ran to the hospital and watched his baby being born. And that guy made it back for Without Love. Like down to the wire, right? Like you yes. were on stage. Like I was back. on stage. Wonder. Oh, and that's the other part of the story is. <laughs> Obviously, they had to find someone else. Right. We had to find someone else to go on a seaweed just in case. And the sweet boy, I think his name was Gabe. Uh, Cameron? Cam oh, his name was Cameron. His name was Cameron. He was in the chorus, and he's like one of those sweet guys who just wants to be in it, helps backstage. Like, you throw him in the chorus, and he's not happy to be there, but he's <laughs> filling his spot. You know, he's he's there, and we're glad he's there. So the stage manager gives him the script, and she's like, you have to you have to go on for seaweed. If he's not here, you have to go on. And he, and he, he was the last person that wanted to go on a seaweed like he was so stressed so he was panicked in the wings about to come on stage for seaweed's part in without love and then the guy who played seaweed runs in at the last second and finishes the show and then goes back to the hospital with his baby mama so that was crazy can you believe that that's wild wild so that's my crazy theater story do we have any other crazy theater stories i feel like we definitely have a bunch but this podcast is already getting pretty long. Yeah, I mean, there, there's crazy stories from, like, rehearsals and stuff. But I think that's my craziest, like, performance. So, we just finished a show yeah. called The Play That Goes Wrong that was so much freaking fun. Eric was, was on stage. He was in one of the roles. It was very, like, ensemble cast. Like, everybody had so much to do on stage. And Eric was great in it. Thank you. And I got to come in two weeks before, skip all the hard stuff, and just learn how to help backstage. So it was me, my aunt Nikki, who was a stage manager, and our good theater buddy Tom, who is one of my most favorite people on the face of the planet, backstage controlling all the craziness because it's called the play that goes wrong. It's literally a play within a play and everything falls apart, including the set at the very end. Yeah. So people backstage have a lot of responsibilities and have to kind of be with it and know what's going on. So it was so much fun to just be backstage, have a chill backstage job, Still get to hang out with the cast who are so fun and the production staff. And it was a hoot and a half all yeah. around. I loved it. It was a good time. I loved being backstage. Like, I hardly ever do that. But I was so... Well, and this was a weird hybrid thing where you were yeah. a member of the stage crew, but you were seen by the audience a lot as things were going Which well. is funny because that was my least favorite part. Like, my yeah. favorite part was being backstage. I didn't like when I had to go on stage and do improv parts, mm -hmm. but um, I did it. Um, but yeah, that was super fun. And... I guess we could finish with what theater stuff we have coming up. Yeah. What do we have coming up? Well, actually, I don't know if we can talk about anything yeah. we have coming up yet. <laughs> I guess all we'll have to say is stay tuned because yeah. there's theater stuff coming up. There will be plenty to do this season. We're finishing out the season at SLT. We are not in the last show of the season. They're doing Adam's Family. It's going to be so fun. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see it. And then the new season starts. So yep. we'll keep you updated 
and let you know what's going on. I think that's it. Thank you yep. guys so much for watching. Don't forget to smash the subscribe and the like button. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Toodles. Toodles. <laughs>